makes us want to praise, but also what makes us want to bring to you the needs that we have. Because, Lord, just being aware of your presence and knowing that you love us so much, that you promised that we would bring our cares and cast them on you, that you would bear our burdens. So, Lord, we do that right now. Right now, Lord, we pray for Miss Lily that you would give her strength today. Just touch her body, strengthen her. <coughs> As she visits the doctor this week, just give the doctor wisdom and direction in ministry to this family. Lord, we pray for Bernie Grunster's dad, Bernie number one. So we pray for your touch in his body as he recovers from hip surgery. We pray that it would be strength and ease and fast and that healing, complete healing would be the result this time of rehab, Mr. Bruncher, to be with you, Lord, in a very special way. And with all of those family members that are surrounding and helping and ministering to them, just be with them. Lord, I pray today for, for uh, Henry's sister, Tack Carrier. I pray, Lord, that you touch her body in the name of Jesus, that you help, that you strengthen, that you Lord, we have many that we're praying for daily. We pray for your strength. We pray for your help. We pray for your healing. We pray for your deliverance. We pray for your provision. We pray for relationships. We pray for homes. We pray for our nation. We pray for the world. We pray for the church spread across this world. That you would have your hand on it and do a great work of protection and use to bring about it. Of the knowledge of who God is to this world. Lord, today for this service, we pray for the remainder that it have your anointing, that every word that's said would be ordained and beneficial to these that are gathered this morning. We thank you and say hallelujah to the Lord. In Jesus' name. Just in Haiti, if you look around the 
Facebook and through our emails and our supporters that this was going to be a tough trip. Tommy Peters, who is the youth minister at Bluffville Christian, has some background in construction. His father was an engineer and he worked with him and, and knows a little bit more than I do, which doesn't take much to know more than I do about construction. So Tommy Peters has been going in with me to help interpret for me what the engineers that are doing this building are saying. So Tommy and I were driving to Charlotte, we left from the Charlotte airport. Midway to Charlotte, about an hour and a half into our trip, American Airlines calls me and says, we're sorry to inform you, this was an automated person, we're sorry to inform you that the plane flight for your associate, Gary Hayes, who is the engineer, who has all the equipment that's going to do the measurements, we've canceled it due to weather. So Gary is, not even knowing this yet, on his way to the airport in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Tommy said to me, if he doesn't go, there's no reason for us to go. Do we need to turn around and head back to Bristol till we get this straightened out and reschedule? And I went, wait a minute. <laughs> so I called Steve. God told me to. And I said, would you get on the computer, would you look and see what Delta has going on in Fort Smith? American and Delta are the only two airlines that serves Fort Smith. So if American was canceled. And Steve said they have a flight going out tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. He could possibly meet up with you and Tommy in Port of France if there's room. So we began praying about that. <laughs> and about an hour later, when Gary finally reached Fort Smith, he called me and he goes, Oh, Linda Gale. And I don't know why he calls me Gale, because that's not my name. That's <laughs> okay. He's an engineer and an artist. I go with it. <laughs> I said, what is it, Gary? And he said, my flight is canceled. We can't go. I went, Gary, go over to the Delta desk and see if they can help you. Okay. So he stayed on the phone the whole time. Steve, I don't know what the deal will be. But he stayed on the phone the whole time, which is okay. He gets to Delta. The Delta agent goes, what? And he said, I need to get to Port of France. He's had to say it three times. And the person says, I don't know that we can do that. And I'm on the phone with him, and I said, Gary, ask him to look at the 7 a.m. flight, see if you can get to Atlanta, and see if there's a flight from Atlanta to Port au Prince. Because we're taking that flight in 25 days? 26 days. Thank you. Give me an extra day. Love you. 26 days, we're taking that very flight down to Port au Prince with the construction team and a medical mission team with 18. So Gary was talking to the guy, actually talked the guy through the reservation. And we were able to make it. So Tommy goes, thank you, Jesus. So we flew in. Uh, we were supposed to get into the Navy at 3.30. Our flight got in at 2.30. Gary's flight got in at 2.15. Um, I was able to get through the road, get through the first part of customs. And at the top of this escalator going down to baggage plane, I could see Gary walking out with the customs agent. That's not a good thing. He was supposed to wait for us. Do not leave custom, the, the baggage claim area until we get there. So I started yelling his name, and he heard me, and he goes, Oh, Sue! And I went, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just come back here. <laughs> so he was able, we were able to get him back. I mean, this is how Satan is working. Every step we take, we have to be ready. We have to be ready. But because, Evelyn, where? Because we are happy, because the victory is ours, we know that we can't just react and get angry or frustrated or give up and throw our hands. We keep pressing on. We know that God wants us in Braemont. We know that this church is very important. I mean, think about it. The devil just has a short period of time. We've got to get that church finished and let it, the congregation grow. They are to a point now where we have to put up <coughs> tarp outside of the already enlarged open-air pavilion because there are so many coming to worship with us. They know it. They are turning from the Satan that they see and have lived with all their lives in Haiti, and they're coming. So it's very important, I think, and God has laid it on my heart that we need to finish it. Whatever it takes, we need to get it finished soon. So we get to Port-au-Prince. We get up to, uh, up to Jacques-Blanc safely. Um, we get into our rooms and are talking, and Eve says, um, I don't know if we can get the wood for the scaffolding there. We had already done this preliminary planning before we left. And he goes, I'm going to have to go 
her seat. So he spent half the night making sure that scaffolding, we rent it, we rent pieces of wood for scaffolding there because that's the way you have to do it. So they brought the pieces of wood the next day. We got our measurements 